Popular culture is more vulgar, vapid, self-absorbed, hedonistic, and dehumanizing than at any other time in living memory. Culture is supposed to be uplifting. It's supposed to infuse our lives with intrigue, lust for knowledge, and appreciation of beauty. Instead, for the past two decades, pop culture has only served as a sewer pipe of projectile diarrhea aimed directly at our gawping mouths. By its very definition, popular culture has always been mass-produced for mass consumption. But over the last 20 years, as I'm sure you've noticed, pop culture has become significantly more vacuous and obscene. It's a rancid assault on the senses. Why is popular culture so contrived, plastic, empty, meaningless, grotesque, and incredibly retarded. Because from the 20th century onwards, post-modernist, moral relativist, critical theory espousing, cultural Marxist nihilists began to seize control of society. Post-modernism seeks to erase the distinction between high culture and popular culture. They want to turn everything on its head. In simple terms, post-modernists have sought to reshape society in their image. And that's why everything's so ugly. From architecture, to art, to music, to entertainment, they're making everything hideous. The goal? To completely undermine the foundation of Western civilization and leave us open to subversion and capitulation. Look at television. TV's endless portrayal of broken families, emasculated male figures, and aberrant, nihilistic, droog-like youths. The stars of so-called reality television are virtually always narcissistic, amoral, and borderline insane. They have no redeeming traits. Indoctrinating us with the idea that this is actual reality. That this is how we should act too. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube, you ate like the tube, you raise your children like the tube, you even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs! In the decadent late stages of a society, Bizarre behavior proliferates and is legitimized by the dominant culture. They're fetishizing pathology. We're even seeing the mainstreaming of pedophilia by the news and entertainment media. Salon.com giving a platform to a wannabe child molester. Articles that legitimize watching child porn. A new Fox show that shows a transgender six-year-old wearing a sadomasochistic ball gag. This is all intended to drag us down into the gutter. Once we absorb this kind of degeneracy, our moral filter is irreparably damaged. Studies show that the more TV you watch, the more depressed you are, even for active people who exercise regularly. And is it really any wonder, given the warped and corrosive view of humanity that is perpetuated by television? We are their cattle. We are being bred for slavery. The revolution. Can somebody please explain to me what the hell that's all about? Is that idiot licking his nuts again? Popular culture is also hypersexualized. It's not prudish to observe that the sexual imagery we're bombarded with by television is infinitely more gratuitous than it was just 25 years ago. Even pornography itself is becoming uglier and nastier. It's documented that this hypersexualization process has normalized cheating and betrayal. It's this, oh, everyone else is doing it, so why not me, mentality. Hypersexuality in popular culture leads to ruined relationships and failed marriages. Pop culture is making us miserable and lonely. Look at the cult of celebrity. Being famous used to require having actual talent, even as recently as 20 years ago. Now, the measure of fame a celebrity achieves is directly proportionate with the volume of tasteless debauchery that they inflict on the world. Vulgarity has replaced talent. The more vulgar and ostentatious, the better. Thanks to social media, young people have been indoctrinated into this idea that narcissism, not fulfillment, not meaning, not authenticity, but narcissism is the ultimate measure of satisfaction and importance. Celebrity is just a reflection of that. So what do we look for in our celebrities? Talent, meaning, Authenticity? No. We look for narcissism. When 16-year-olds were asked in a survey, what would you like to do for your career? 54% answered 
become a celebrity. Yet nearly 70% of them had no idea whatsoever how they would achieve this. Sometimes when I watch TV, I stop being myself and oh, I'm the star of a series or I, or I have my own talk show or I'm on the news getting out of a limo going someplace important. All I ever have to do is be famous. People watch me and they love me. It's no surprise that since the explosion of celebrity-led narcissism, young people are more depressed than ever. Suicides amongst those aged 10 to 24 are up every year since 2010. Why are you all so unhappy? Because you're aspiring to something completely vacuous and unobtainable for the vast majority of people. Popular culture is making us miserable. Celebrities are now more revered than religious icons. This is why people suddenly turn into gushing morons whenever a celebrity dies. Rendered blubbering idiots over somebody they never knew and never even met. In many cases, someone they weren't even interested in until they died. It's like North Korean competitive crying every other week. <laughs> And look at celebrities who wake up from their coma and use their platform to bite the hand that feeds them by questioning what they're a part of. I've got one that can see. When Kanye went off script and started decrying the popular culture he once served, they put him in a psych ward. Because y'all been lied to and can't play what they want to play because they've been paid to play that bullshit. Look at how the custodians of pop culture treat celebrities who think for themselves or who challenge the status quo. They're immediately dispensed with because the entire scam is dependent on a complete lack of diversity. A vicious intolerance of anything that's truly original or unpredictable. That's why popular culture is so sterile. And you know, it's ironic that one of the most popular talent shows is called The X Factor. Given that the introduction of actual X factors, i.e. unknown quantities, into the system would cause it to collapse. Look at popular music. The same handful of people writing and producing songs for the same handful of popular artists. Why do you think everything sounds the same? The same procession of electronic beats, repeated hooks and verbal diarrhea that passes for popular music now. <laughs> music is less diverse and the lyrics are more dumbed down than ever before. Man, rap today fucking sucks bad. They're not even saying words anymore. They just got a hard-ass fucking beat to trick dumbasses like you to make you think you like the shit. We've hit a brick wall. There hasn't been a single authentic movement in popular music for the last quarter of a century. And look at the effect it's had. Young people were once able to channel their self-loathing, their anger, through the medium of rebellious music. Think punk, grunge, goth. Now, they're all growing up listening to sterile drivel like One Direction and Maroon 5. Yes, we always had manufactured plastic crap, but we also had alternatives. Now there are no alternatives. They just don't get the airtime. MTV used to play alternative music videos. Is that what they mean when they say videos have symbolism? <laughs> <laughs> what does MTV play now? 16 and pregnant musicians with actual talent and authenticity, because they still exist, are prevented from challenging this sterile status quo, while talentless, button-pushing, noise-vomiting DJs are deified. Millennials have been stripped of the ability to diffuse their adolescent rage and alienation into music or subculture. So they turn to the mental ghetto of identity politics instead. And that hasn't gone so well. What has my generation contributed to advance popular culture over the last 30 years? Humiliatingly little. Seriously, what have we contributed? Can you name anything positive? Gangster rap? A movement that encouraged millions upon millions of young people to aspire to act like degenerate criminal thugs. Yeah, that worked out great, didn't it? But then look at someone like Hopsin. Here's a guy who raps about how retarded and destructive gangster chic is. A guy who tells young people to get off drugs and live clean. What happens to musicians like Hopsin? Yeah, some of them get signed to big labels, but then they get parked for three years, or their albums are deliberately given no promotion. 
They're never allowed to obtain superstar status. How did rap music go from really good to so dry? Real artists get shelved and whack ones get famous. To leave masses brainless, a smart mind is dangerous. Because their message represents a threat to cultural Marxism, a threat to the toxic identity that the music industry force feeds young people. Look at youth counterculture. In the past, youth culture was spearheaded by students. They created the counterculture which then trickled down into pop culture. What are students busying themselves with today? Safe spaces, political correctness, virtue signalling and gender studies. When did being cool become about parroting everyone else's opinions? They are socially conscious citizens and are provoked by the loathsome presence of an unmutual. They are sheep. When did being hip become about writing laborious Facebook posts about how progressive you are. As Theodore Dalrymple noted, the pressure to conform to canons of popular taste, or rather lack of taste, has never been stronger. Everyone's petrified of constant social media surveillance by their peers. Reactionary! Rebel! Disharmonious! Rebel! Reactionary! And we force ourselves to swallow this rotten culture, just so we can feel an affinity with our peers so we can fit in. That's why there's no discernible youth counterculture. It's all predicated on conformity. You must conform. Yes, sir. It is my sworn duty to see that you do conform. And kids today are so satiated with the deluge of entertainment on offer that they have no time or interest in rebelling against the received culture. No time to create their own look. No inclination to form their own ideas about the world when it's so much easier to just regurgitate what Russell Brand or Meryl Streep is saying. Whether it be fashion, art, music, literature, comedy, culture has been completely sanitized. There is no counterculture. And that's why, with very few exceptions, everyone looks the same. Same haircut, same beard, same clothes, same meaningless tattoos, same lazy cynicism. Same political views, same outlook. There's no authenticity, there's no daring, there's no individuality. Look at modern conceptual art. The postmodernist war on absolute truth has spawned the demented belief that anything whatsoever can be considered art. Why is modern art that requires skill or displays awe inspiring beauty ignored? in favour of tawdry trash. Literally trash. Have you ever visited Tate Modern in London? It's a giant building full of scrap metal, concrete blocks, urinals, and this, whatever it is. They call it an art gallery. It more closely resembles a landfill site. What does this look like to you? Dog food and a turd? No, it's conceptual art. The postmodernist decree that literally everything has to be part of a social justice movement has also inspired feminists to offer up their bodily functions as art. A giant ass was nominated for the Turner Prize. I mean, forget full retard. We've gone full idiocracy. The years passed and mankind became stupider at a frightening rate. And the number one movie in the country was called Ass. And that's all it was for 90 minutes. It won eight Oscars that year. So we're told to genuflect over the deeper meaning of a six foot butt crack while actual works of art are being renamed because the original title might be offensive. Look at modern theatre. We went from Shakespeare and Oscar Wilde to this. They're making everything that's supposed to be exquisite, hideous and repugnant. What's supposed to inspire us now dehumanizes us. When ugliness is venerated as beauty, we know we're in the depraved late stages of a civilization. Popular culture is so invasively vulgar that it's often cited as one of the factors in the radicalization of Islamic terrorists. Jihadists in the West often immerse themselves in this culture and then become suicide bombers as the only form of repentance. That's how bad it is. That's right, Jersey Shore and Miley Cyrus are actually seen by terrorists as legitimate reasons to attack the West. And who could argue with them? But seriously, when we defend Western civilization, we're not talking about popular culture. We're talking about the Sistine Chapel, not Piss Christ, 
We're talking about Beethoven, not Bieber. But we've become bored of what we've inherited. The true meaning behind the rich tapestry of our cultural heritage has been forgotten. Popular culture as it exists today actually represents a direct threat to Western civilization, since it provides our enemies with a justifiable reason to destroy us. A civilization is starting to uh, unravel, okay? And, that, and you can find it again and again and again through history. That's a culture that no longer believes in itself, okay? And then, and, and then what, you, what you invariably get are, are, you know, are, are, are people who are convinced of the power of heroic masculinity, okay? On the edges, whether they're the Vandals and the Huns, okay? Or whether, or whether they're the barbarians of ISIS, okay? You see them, you know, starting to mass on the outsides of the culture and that's what we have right now if we allow this to represent what we stand for whatever moral superiority our ancestors earned will be eviscerated within a generation that's why we need to constantly savage this notion that popular culture represents western civilization it doesn't the weaponization of popular culture as i've described it is merely the reassertion of cultural Marxism. By making the culture that underpins our society completely meaningless and therefore rudderless, it can be easily overthrown. We need to reject popular culture in all its grisly, grotesque, dehumanizing forms. We need to encourage a new cultural renaissance that is once again inspired by beauty, talent, and the exaltation of human accomplishment. Click the link below to subscribe to the channel, and for more breaking news go to Infowars.com.